What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. If I sound a little bit different today, there's two reasons. Number one, I'm kind of sick and was visiting the top of Mount Chunder pretty recently. And number two, I'm actually using my mobile setup because 2K has brought me out to LA to experience the Borderlands 3 gameplay reveal event. So if you want more Borderlands information beyond what you're gonna get in this video, definitely stay tuned to the channel. But in this video, we actually have some really interesting stuff to take a look at involving Borderlands 3 leading up to that reveal. So if you can't wait, if you want more information, this is the video to check out. So let's get started. Now this information is coming from an official Borderlands video showcasing one of the new streamer tools that's launching with Borderlands 3. It's going to let players actually interact with a streamer and be able to look at what loot they have, what build they're using, and so on. But during this process of showcasing this streamer tool, off as you can imagine it also showed off some of the aspects of Borderlands 3 so let's take a look at those aspects firstly starting with the weapons so, starting us off, we have this Dauntless Hyena. It's a level 4 uncommon SMG. And something new this time around is that weapons are going to be represented by a numerical value. This one is 111, so that you can more easily decide on the fly whether or not a weapon is worth holding on to. And I would assume another uncommon weapon of the same level may have a better numerical rating based on its stats. Some more information about this weapon is, well, looking at those stats, we have damage, 9, pretty simple, but accuracy and handling are both a percentage. Now, I wonder if 100% is the best you can possibly get ever, or maybe it's the best that this weapon can get, or maybe it's the best that a doll weapon can get. That's really interesting. Reload time, pretty simple. Fire rate is 900 or 9.5 uh, per second. Not sure why they decide to do per second and not rounds per minute, but I digress. The magazine size is pretty simple. But then we have two other factors going on. Plus 21% weapon rate of fire. Now that's really interesting and that reminds me of a Borderlands 1 weapon system where you would have a lot more of these stats, increases to rate of fire, damage, and so on. But we also have 2.2 times and 4 times weapon zoom. And the discrepancy is noted at the very bottom. Again, this is a doll weapon, and that means that it can switch between fire rates. This one says swaps between fully automatic and four shot burst. So I would assume the fully automatic will have a 2.2 times zoom, and the four shot burst will have the higher zoom. That's really cool. And that's actually quite a lot going on for just one uncommon weapon. In fact, let's look at another one, the Iron Willed Ranger. This is an uncommon level 2 Jacob's Pistol. As you can see, the stats are pretty much the same. This one has a lot more accuracy, uh, definitely actually the same fire rate, which is really interesting, much lower magazine size. The random stat here is plus 10% critical hit damage, and the Jacob's Perk is critical hits ricochet one bullet at the nearest enemy. Going down a rarity, we have this Sharp Ranger with, you know, worse stats, obviously, worse rating. The bonuses are actually a 40% melee damage increase and a 5 a times weapon zoom with the same Jacob's perk as last time where critical hits ricochet one bullet. But let's go up in rarity and take a look at a purple epic Jacob's weapon. This Iron Willed Cut and Scatter Gun Epic Shotgun. So we can see here the damage is actually represented for shotguns by 8 times 12 for how many pellets times how much damage they're actually doing. And the random stats we have a 25% weapon damage increase, a 40% increase to melee damage, and a 3.5 weapon zoom with the Jacob's perk still being the same. I'm going to be interested if perhaps we can get Critical hits ricochet two bullets, for example, at the nearest enemy. And one last gun to look at, it's another uncommon uh, Jacob's Pistol, the Daisy Peacekeeper. And I want to draw your attention to this because firstly, we can see those random stats getting a little bit different. This one has a 23% a reload speed increase and only a 20% melee damage increase. That shows a lot more variability. In other Borderlands games, if it had a melee attachment, it would be a 50% or 100% increase and that was it. There was nothing in between. This shows that there is stuff in between, and you can get a lot more different variation there. We also have a 1.5 times weapon zoom. 
But moving on from there, we actually got our first look at the skill trees in Borderlands 3 and some of the changes that they're bringing. So here it is. This is for the Siren character uh, this time around, and we can see already just from the layout some of the differences. Firstly, in terms of similarities, we have three different skill trees that you can go down. This middle one is Mystical Assault, there's another green one to the side, and a red one to the right. So you can choose which one of the three you want to go down. But for this middle one, we have kind of the skills that you level up one out of five. As you can see, that's pretty standard for a Borderlands game. But there's these other skills off to the side and at the very top that have gears beside them, and they seem to be separate from the normal like one out of five skills. Those seem to be utility skills, skills that actually let you do something. We have melee override skills, for example, in Borderlands 2. I think those will be classified as these skills in Borderlands 3. And we can see that first skill present here with phase cast. In fact, this is the overall skill for the Siren. Amara sends forward an astral projection of herself dealing damage to everything and its path. And then we see that red text, this must be equipped to use. We can then look at a passive ability, do harm. Killing an enemy grants Amara a stack of rush. Activating her action skill consumes all rush stacks. For every stack of rush consumed, Amara's action skill damage is temporarily increased and we see no red text. So again, that red text and those skills would indicate actual action skills, stuff that lets you do things rather than passive abilities. We can actually see another passive ability here with Violent Tapestry. Applying an elemental effect grants Amara a stack of rush. Activating her action skill consumes all rush stacks. For every stack of rush consumed, Amara's elemental effect chance is temporarily increased. And that's all we have for now, but I'm really interested to see how this pans out because we've seen during gameplay trailers Amara do much more interesting things than her original phase shift was described. She is slamming the ground, she is holding enemies in midair, and that would infer that those action skills that I outlined are doing some pretty crazy stuff for your build. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Borderlands 3 content, be sure to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.